video, I'm going to show you how to expand brackets containing thirds and then simplify. So let's have a look at the first one up here. We're just expanding the brackets like we normally would. So we're multiplying all the terms together with each other. So if we take the first two here, one multiplied by one is just one. Then these two, one multiplied by negative root five is just negative root five. Don't forget the signs. These two here, we've got positive root 5 multiplied by 1, which is just positive root 5, so we have to put a plus there. And the last two terms, these two here, so we've got positive root 5 multiplied by negative root 5. Well, when we multiply those two terms together, those square root symbols cancel each other out, so we're just left with negative 5. So when you times a positive root, with a negative root, it just leaves you with negative 5 because the two square roots, when you multiply them together, they cancel each other out. Okay, so just bear that in mind when you're multiplying out these thirds. So don't forget to simplify. In this one, we've got a negative and a positive root 5. Well, if we add those two terms together, they cancel to 0. So all that's left to subtract are these numbers here. So 1 take away 5 is negative 4. So there's the first one. Alright, on to the next one. Don't make the common mistake in trying to square both these numbers. Remember what squared actually means. It means multiplying something by itself. So really, we're multiplying 1 plus root 3 by 1 plus root 3. So write out that bracket twice just to show that you're multiplying it by itself. And then, it's just like before, you're expanding the brackets, so multiplying all the terms together. So if I start with those two, well, 1 multiplied by 1 is just 1. Then these two here, so I've got 1 multiplied by positive root 3, which is just positive root 3. Then I've got another positive root 3 times 1, which is the same thing as before, positive root 3. And then the last two terms here, Positive root 3 times positive root 3. Remember, when you multiply those together, those square roots cancel each other out, and I'm just left with positive 3. Okay, so I'll just show that part here. So we do root 3 times root 3 is just equal to 3. Okay, so all that's left now is to simplify these terms. I've got 1 plus 3 here, which gives me 4. And then I've got 1 root 3 here, and a second one here, so 1 root 3 plus 1 root 3 is 2 root 3. So that's the final answer. And we just write it like that, we don't need to put times, we just put the 2 in front of the root 3. Okay, now, on to the next one. It's exactly the same method, it's just a little bit harder because we've got a few extra numbers in there, but we're just expanding like we did in these two examples. So, I'm going to start with these two terms. So, 7 multiplied by 7 is just 49. Then we've got, okay, let's take these two here. So, I've got 7 multiplied by 2 root 3. Well, these two numbers I just multiply together. So, the 7 multiplied by 2 gives me 14. So, we're left with 14 root 3. Okay, so you're just timesing those two together and the root 3 just stays as it is. Now, these two terms here, so the same as before except the sign has changed, so it's negative 2 root 3 multiplied by 7, we'll just multiply those two numbers together, so negative 2 times 7 is just negative 14, not forgetting there's a root 3 here attached to that 2, okay, which stays the same. Now for the last two terms, so I've got, and I'm going to write these two out here, I've got negative 2 root 3 here multiplied by positive 2 root 3. Well, minus 2 times 2 gives me negative 4, so I want to write that down. And root 3 multiplied by root 3, well I did it up here, is just 3. So we're left with 3. But remember, you're timesing these things together. So you need to either write multiply or you can write brackets because that means multiply. But remember to multiply that negative 4 with the 3 as well when you're simplifying in the, ne in the next step. So let's tidy this up a little bit. 
Well, I've got a positive 14 root 3 and a negative 14 root 3, so I know those will go to 0. Then I've got 49, and then minus 4 times 3, but that's negative 12. So I just need to subtract 12 from 49, which gives me 37. Okay, on to the last one. So again, we're just expanding the brackets. I'm going to start by multiplying those two terms together. So 3 multiplied by 4 is just 12. Then I'm going to multiply this 3 with that term over there. So I've got 3 multiplied by negative 2 root 2. Remember, you're just timesing those two numbers together. So 3 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 6. And then that root 2 is still there. Okay. Now, these terms. I've got 2 root 50 multiplied by 4, so just times those two numbers together, so 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, and I'm left with the root 50 there still, so it's 8 root 50. And now for the last two terms here, I've got, and I'm going to write this part out down here, I've got 2 root 50 over here multiplied with negative 2 root 2. Well. 2 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 4, so I'm just going to pop that down there. Then I've got root 50 times root 2. Well, hopefully you know that property, that when you multiply a number that's being square rooted with another number that's being square rooted, it's the same thing as multiplying those two numbers together and square rooting. So I can rewrite this, root 50 times root 2, as root 100 because 50 times 2 is 100 but we're still square rooting that number so I'm going to rewrite up here negative 4 root 100 when I multiply out those terms so now we need to simplify so I've got here 12 I'm just going to leave as it is for the moment I've got negative 6 root 2 I'm also just going to leave that for the moment and I'm just going to simplify this last term over here because I know what the square root of 100 is. The square root of 100 is 10. So if I multiply 10 with negative 4, I get negative 40. So that last term turns to negative 40. Now, I can subtract those numbers. I've got 12 take away 40. Well, that's going to be negative 28. Okay, so those two terms I have simplified. Now, these two, we can actually tidy these up as well. I'm just going to leave this one as it is for the moment, but this 8 root 50, I can simplify this. Now, I have got another video on simplifying thirds with what I'm about to do, so you might want to have a look at that video first or afterwards. But basically, if you have root 50, we can do the opposite of what I did earlier here. And I can split the number 50 up into its factors. So factors of 50 are 1 times 50, 2 times 25, 5 times 10. But this pair here includes a square number. And remember, you can square root square numbers to get one integer. So 25, we can square root to get 5. So I'm going to take this pair here and rewrite the square root of 50 as the square root of 2 times the square root of 25. Remember, they mean exactly the same thing. We're allowed to rewrite it like this, okay, because 2 times 25 is 50. So if I do that, remember, we're multiplying that root 50 by 8. So I can rewrite that as 8 and then root 2 root 25. So I'm just changing that root 50 to be written like that, okay. And now we can calculate again, because remember what I just, I just said, the square root of 25 is 5, so we can change that to the number 5. And if I multiply that 5 with the 8 here, that's going to give me 40. So now I've got negative 28, this hasn't changed yet, and then I've got 8 multiplied by that 5, which gives me positive 40, and we've still got the root 2 there. So the final step, well, we can add those terms together because we have a root 2 and another root 2. So 
the minus 28 remains the same, but here we've got 40 root 2 take away 6 root 2, which leaves me with positive 34 root 2. So that's the final answer. So there was lots to do in that last question, okay? We were just expanding the back brackets as normal, but you needed to do some simplifying here with this third 50. And like I said earlier, I do have another video explaining how we do that with more examples. So you might get a combination uh, in a question where you're expanding brackets, simplifying thirds like this. You might be rationalizing the denominator. I have that in another video where you have to expand brackets as well. So make sure you check those videos out. And that's it. So bye-bye for me.